Hi everybody, it's me, Professor Jonathan Vasquez, and today you're still going to learn about the consonant sounds. Hi everybody, welcome back to your English phonetics course. And as the title of the video says, today is going to be our last video from the consonant sounds. So let's get into the topic. Let's remember that there is something that is called manners of articulation and in that sense we have the consonant sounds. We already learned about the nasals, then plosive in only one video. Then I created another one with only the fricatives and today's video is going to get focused on number four and number five which is affricates and approximants. Alright, so group number four, affricates. So here, as you can see, we have only two phonemes and it's going to be really easy for you because those phonemes are really close in terms of sound uh, to Spanish and you're going to see why. Uh, in order to produce this sound, we have to remember the first group and the second one, which is plosive and nasal. Why? Because in here, the affricate sounds are mixed. It's a mix between a plosive manner and a nasal manner. It means that when we are going to produce this sound, a plosive sound is going to be with a nasal one in only one, and then the sound is going to be produced, okay? I will show you how, don't worry. So, in order to make it clear for you, so, all of the consonant sounds described so far are produced with either or either a complete obstruction of the airflow, which is plosive and nasal, remember that, or a narrowing of the mouth passage, which is fricative. One pair of consonants, however, is produced by a combination of these two methods. This is affricates, as I said it before. What we're gonna do in order to produce affricate is to pronounce a plosive sound and a nasal one. So, the sounds begin with a complete obstruction formed by the tongue tip contacting the alveolar ridge, like alveolar plosive. Then the air, instead of being released out of the mouth, suddenly with an explosive force, is released quickly with a friction behind the alveolar ridge as the tongue moves backwards toward the palate. Consequently, they are known as post-alveolar affricates. But you don't have to get and you don't have to understand this type of terms. Don't worry, it's just a name, but it's really important here for you is to learn that there are two different sounds in the affricates group and they are going to be produced with a plosive one and a nasal sound. And they are going to be produced when we pronounce a plosive manner sound and a nasal manner sound. Consequently, the explanation that I just gave is going to be understood better, maybe just in the case you didn't, with some examples that I'm going to show you. So here, in order to produce these two different sounds that I just mentioned, which is this one and this one, we are going to start producing this sound that we already learned in group number three, which is shh. Remember that one? When we try to quiet someone down, like shh, like that? Then we make it voiced. Remember that this one is voiceless because there is not a vibration in our vocal cords, like shh. But here, we're gonna make it voiced. It means that we're gonna make a really strong effort in our throat in order to produce this phoneme, which remember that is shh. When we do this sound, it's voiced. It means that our vocal cords are going to vibrate, but these are two sounds that we already know. In order to produce these sounds, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do a short clipped, and in that sense, it's going to strongly start it, like this. So remember that we're gonna start here. Shh. Then we're gonna make it voiced. Shh. And then we're gonna pass in here, short and clipped. It means 
So once again, we're gonna start in here. Then we're gonna make it voice. And then we're gonna make it short and clipped. Like that, okay? So we're gonna see some examples. Maybe you will understand the sound with some examples. And here we have to pay attention to some letters. And in that sense, every time that you see these letters, you are going to know that the sound that this letter produce are this one. So we have first one, job. Remember that the sound is <laughs> so job. Then we have judge, judge. Then we have ginger, gem, manage, suggest. Soldier, soldier, and adjust. Okay? Now we're gonna move on to the second one, which is this one. Here, I think it's pretty easy for you because it's our own CH, our CH in Spanish. So if you pay attention every time that you see a CH, of course we know that is CH. So we're gonna say chair. Chair, achieve, touch. Then every time you see a T C H, watch and catch. And at the end, a single T in between. So lecture, lecture. All right? So now I'm gonna read it all in order for you to differentiate the sounds because this one is J and this one is Ch. So we have job. J -j job, judge, ginger, gym, manage, suggest, soldier, adjust, chair, achieve, touch, watch, catch, lecture. All right, one more time. This one is j and this one is ch. Okay, I think you might think that this one and this one are kind of similar, but remember that this one is short, and this one is longer, remember that, right? I think one recommendation that I would like to give you is that try to assimilate this sound as the sound that we have in Spanish, which is la J, G, 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 job, okay? In that sense, when you say, for example, juca or jojo, like that, that is the sound that we produce in here. G, G, okay? Now we're going to move on with some practical exercises and we're gonna practice some pronunciation with sentences. So we have first one, Carlos got a new job. Only God can judge me. Ginger girls are very beautiful. I can manage this stress. The doctor suggested me to eat less meat. That soldier has no legs. Could you adjust it, please? And now here, you can touch that chair. Let's watch the movie together. I love Martha Ramirez lectures. All right, so now we are going to move on with approximate, which basically, uh, if you pay attention, there are four phonemes in here, four consonant sounds, and they are divided into like two different categories, let's say, but it's basically the same. The only difference is that when we are going to pronounce these three, the, pos the mouth position is central. It means that you don't have to move it. And when we are going to pronounce this one, the mouth position moves to one side to the mouth, which is when we pronounce the L, L. All right, so we're gonna see it in context. First of all, I would like to say that they are vowel-like consonant sounds. It's just the formal name because we don't block the airflow fully. It means that when we are going to pronounce this, there's still air coming out. So right now, I'm going to explain each one of them. And if you pay attention, the first one, which is this one, 
it says that the sound is similar in position to the vowel sound lowercase i. It means that as we pronounce lowercase i, remember that lowercase i is a long sound and it's going to be like e like that. So it means that every time that we're going to pronounce this sound is something like e e, but we're going to put before that e sound a e e e like that, like e e. Then we have that the following sound, which is this one, is similar in position to the vowel sound lowercase u. Remember the lowercase u is a long sound and it's something like u u. The air is partly blocked at the back of the mouth and with the lips. It means that every time that we're going to produce this sound is going to be similar to u, but here we're going to add u, 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 something like that. And last, from the central uh, category, we have that this sound involves moving your tongue close to the alveolar ridge, not touching it. What it means is that every time that we're going to do rrr, rrr, we're not going to touch the alveolar ridge itself, but we're going to move our tongue a little bit close to it, like rrr, rrr, like that. And finally, the last one, which is this one, for this you have to put your tongue against your upper teeth, which are those ones, and push the air around the sides of your mouth. It means that we're gonna do something like this. Uh, if you pay attention when you produce that sound, the tip of your tongue is gonna go up to the upper teeth, like that. Uh, and as I said it, it's not going to be central, it means that we're not gonna do something like uh, like that, no, it's gonna be moved to one side to some people, I don't know why, but some people make that movement to the right, this side, and some people do it to the left. Like, I don't have a reason why, but when I do it, my tip, the tip of my, my tongue, it goes to the left. Uh, uh. For some reason, it goes to the left, but I don't know, like, try it at home and let's see to what position the tip of your tongue goes, to the right, or to the left. Okay, so now we're gonna move on with some drawings from the mouth position, just in case it's not clear. And in here we have the D first one, which is If you pay attention to this little line, if you pay attention here, it says that the tongue should be like in the middle. When we say try it, the tip of your tongue goes in the central part of your mouth and it stays like that like that on the other hand we have that the this sound the tip of your tongue stays back and up like that and the last one which is here we have that the sound is going to go, of course, from inside, but we have to make an effort when it's going up, and in that sense, it's going to go all the way out, but the tip of your tongue is like really close to your lips, like, uh, 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 like that. So let's read some examples. In the first place, we have, uh, we have reply, orange, radical, raft, Riot. In the second place, we have y, y, and here we have young, useful, and here, even though the letter is not white, and it's u, in here we use y, because when we say u, 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 if you pay attention when we say u, useful, u, u, useful. This sound is produced in here, and basically every time that we have a single vowel, the y sound is together to that vowel. Then we have yok, yoga, yak, which is eh, your, and yell. 
Then we have in third place, West, Walking, Worry, Web, Wood, Wood, Worst, Word. And at the end, we have the one that is not in the center part. And here we have last, last. Pay attention to the position of the tip of your tongue. Last, later, laugh, child, child, problem, people, people, national. All right. So now we're gonna move on with some examples and here I have one sentence for each one of the four phonemes and the first one which is y y y we have my young brother wears yellow every day second one which is y one Wednesday last week I woke up to find Wally walking wearily third one R, r, running rings around Rebecca really irritates Ronald. And last one, Laura is leaving her house because her boyfriend has a problem. All right, so that's it. <laughs> um, let me move this over here. And I'm going to try to make a summary about the manners of articulation because I think it's really important for you to understand that we have five different groups in here which are related to the consonant sounds. We already learned about the nasal and plosive in only one video. Then I made another one which is focused on fricative. And now we have the affricates and approximants. In general, I think this new video and these affricates and approximants phonemes or consonant sounds are really easy because the consonants in here are really similar to the Spanish consonants that we have. Um, that's it. Have a nice day and I'll see you in class.